Good evening on this Monday, April 27th. Welcome to our service of Compline. I'm David Lehman, Bishop of Caledonia, and I'm situated on the traditional unceded territory of the Shimshan people. I welcome you to our service, which comes from the traditional Book of Common Prayer, page 722, if you have the full version, which you can either download in the invitation for this service, or there's a abbreviated version on the diocesan website. We gather during this time of pandemic to be the people of God uh, and to have a time of prayer before retiring for the night, knowing that we place all things into God's good and gracious hands as we take our rest. So I invite you to know that you are in the presence of God and to come into a space of worship. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalm for this evening is Psalm 4, found on page 333. Psalm 4, page 333. We shall say the psalm together. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness, Thou hast set me at liberty when I was in trouble. Have mercy upon me and hearken unto my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye blaspheme mine honour, and have such pleasure in vanity, and seek after falsehood? Know this also, that the Lord hath chosen to himself the man that is godly. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart and in your chamber and be still. Offer the sacrifice of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than men have when their grain and wine increase. I will lay me down in peace and take my rest, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest me dwell in safety. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our reading this evening comes from the Acts of the Apostles, beginning in the ninth chapter at the first verse. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now he was going along and approaching Damascus. Suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, because they heard the voice, but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas Look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. 
At this moment he is praying, and he has seen a vision. A man named Ananias come to him and lay hands on him, so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority over from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring many to bring my name before the Gentiles and the kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately after he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed and said, Is this not the man who made havoc in Jerusalem among those who invoked his name? And has he not come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests? Saul became increasingly more powerful and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. After some time passed, the Jews plotted to kill him, but their plot became known to Saul. They were watching the gates day and night so that they might kill him. But his disciples took him by night, let him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a basket. When he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and described for them how on the road he had seen the Lord, who had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He spoke and argued with the Hellenists, but they were attempting to kill him. When the believers learned of it, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Meanwhile, the church throughout Judea Galilee and Samaria had peace and was built up. Living in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue on page 723. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. We say together the Teluctus Antitruminum. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray, that with thy wanted favor thou wouldst be our guard and keeper now. From all ill dreams defend our eyes, from nightly fears and fantasize. Tread underfoot our ghostly foe, that no pollution we may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, who with the Holy Ghost in thee doth live and reign eternally. Amen. Keep us as the apple of an eye. Hide us under the shadow of thy wings. Alleluia. 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 We say together the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. 
For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. 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 Let us confess the together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our ancestors, to be praised and glorified above all for ever. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let us praise him and magnify him for ever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all for ever. The Almighty and most merciful Lord, guard us and give us his blessing. Amen. On the top of page 726, we confess our sins against God and our neighbor as we pray together. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed through our own grievous fault. Wherefore, we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins and deliver us from all evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will thou not turn again and quicken us? that thy people may rejoice in thee. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. In the collect for this week, may we pray. Almighty God, who has given thine only Son to be both unto us, to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin, and also an example of godly life. Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive that inestimable benefit, and also daily endeavor ourselves to follow the blessed steps of Him, of His most holy life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Visit, we beseech you, O Lord, this place, and drive from it all the snares of the enemy. Let thy holy angels dwell herein to preserve us in peace. And may thy blessing be upon us evermore. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Look down, O Lord, from thy heavenly throne. Illuminate the darkness of this night with thy celestial brightness. And from the children of light, banish the deeds of darkness. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may repose upon thy eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we think of those things that are causing us to be wearied and worn, those things that cause us to be sad and anxious, let us come now before the throne of grace and lay them at Christ's feet. So I invite you, either aloud or in the comments box or in the silence of your heart, to bring before God those things that are on your heart and minds this night. We continue to pray for those suffering from the COVID virus, for those who are in hospital and in intensive care, for those who are in hospital for other reasons or those going through other medical treatments and with all the extra precautions that have to be taken so that they can uh, be safe at this time. We pray for all the medical staff and personnel that are doing such incredible work at this time. We pray for students who started another week of homeschooling today, for the parents who aren't all necessary teachers, for those teachers who are continuing to prepare lessons and to work with students uh, outside of the classroom, and for the training and such that they must go through as they consider reopening schools and what that might look like. How to social distance children at this time and provide an education. We pray for all those frontline workers in stores and in farms and in various places. We pray for all first responders, thinking still of the RCMP in Nova Scotia and for all those who have been touched so profoundly by that tragedy. We pray for all those who find it difficult to mourn at this time because of physical distancing, not being able to give the voice to their grief and their bereavement. We pray for all who lead us in, in the government, in industry, and in the church. Thinking of the clergy that are missing their, uh, their, uh, their parishioners and, and thinking of parishioners that miss one another, their clergy and the church buildings and, and the ability to gather together and be the body of Christ in a physical, tangible way. Praying that we may be always inspired to be the church in, in new and unique ways as we find our way through these days. We pray for our families, for our loved ones, for those who are finding this time very difficult, for those who are undergoing financial stress and hardship, and for those who are just anxious because of the unknown. We pray that God's gracious and loving hand may be upon us all to strengthen us through these days. We pray also for those things that you've added in the petitions that, uh, that I will pray over later when I can read them. And we pray now a general intercession. Be mindful, O Lord, of thy people gathered before thee, Care for the infants, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the faint-hearted, collect the scattered, and bring the wandering to thy fold. Travel with the voyagers, defend the widows, shield the orphans, deliver the captives, heal the sick. Succor all who are in tribulation, necessity, anxiety, or distress. Remember for good all those that love us and those that hate us and those who have desired us unworthy as we are to pray for them. And those whom we have forgotten, do thou, O Lord, remember of the helpless, the Savior of the lost, the refuge of the wanderer, 
the healer of the sick. Thou knowest each one's need, and hast heard their prayer before, and grant unto each according to thy merciful loving kindness and thy eternal love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This evening I invite you also to raise up your thanksgivings, those things that you are, are mindful of this day, the blessings that God has brought into your hearts and your lives. Thinking of all the ways in which God uh, has offered up to you a, a, a glimmer of hope in these days. I am terribly appreciative of this technology. I know it doesn't always work perfectly well. I've seen the screen a couple times flicker tonight, so I, I pray for Thanksgiving for those who make it all happen and work, and that we can gather in this way. So I invite you either aloud or in the comments box or in the sounds heard, offer your thanksgivings to God as we pray. O most merciful Father, we humbly thank thee for all thy gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for life and health and safety, for power to work and leisure to rest, for all that is beautiful in creation and in the lives of men and women. We praise and magnify thy holy name. But above all, we thank thee for our spiritual mercies in Christ Jesus our Lord, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Bottom page 727. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you this night and indeed forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me this evening for a time of prayer. I pray that you have a most restful and peaceful night's sleep, trusting that God will hold all things through the night. Tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., we gather again out of St. Mark's in Dawson Creek for morning prayer with Pastor Don. At 12.15 from the Cathedral, midday prayers with the Dean, Paul Williams. And then I'm back here tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Have a blessed night. See you tomorrow. God loves you. Nighty night.